again to the North Charlestown Church of God. I hadn't said this for a day or two, but have we got any visitors or guests with us for your first time ever? You're back here visiting with us today. I know we've got some from the singing yesterday. Would you all mind standing and give us your name and where you're from? I'm Tom Robertson. Uh, we're originally from Mount Vernon, Indiana. And we moved over here about a year ago. Our father was diagnosed with terminal cancer, so my younger brother Matt here moved mom and dad over with us. And so it's been about a year now, so we've been kind of looking for a place. Well, I hope you found one in this young lady in the middle. My name's Carol Dan Robertson. You go by Ann, don't you? I do. Okay, you was playing. She goes by mom. Yeah. She's the mom. Oh, she goes by mom. <laughs> well, good to have you here, Hi, mom. mom. <laughs> Do what, ma'am? Jesus to show us a place because we're new. I mean, I found where the grocery store is, <laughs> but I'm still getting lost. Why? Oh, yeah. We were members of Mount Vernon Community Church, like <coughs> Chapel United Methodist, there in Mount Vernon, mm -hmm. and we played music. And our church building was where an old. Uh, Ford dealership used to be. So our main place to worship was in the showroom. <laughs> so three of our walls were glass. Uh, they asked us, well, what are you going to call your gospel group? And we said, the Glass House Band. There you go. <laughs> amen, amen. And you did a wonderful job playing bass during the yes, day, too. Oh, I was really privileged that they let me play with them. I just I've missed music so much since we moved here. Come on up, we got room. <laughs> we got room. Absolutely. I wish I put my bass in the car. <laughs> Bring it. There's an amp right there. There's an amp back here, I think. And I'm Matt Robertson. I figured the best place uh, when I found out my father was dying. My mom was next to her brothers. Both my uncles live here in Charlestown. Oh, okay. And I was lucky enough to find a place up here at Eames Road that's less than two or three minutes from uh, either one of my offices. Well, so, right now, I have a place church. Family Close to church. Hopefully, in friends. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good having you all here. <laughs> well, anybody else? First time ever you're visiting with us today. And like I say, I know it's, uh, again, right now with this situation, things are starting to get back into somewhat order. But it's good to see some of you. Willie and Doug, good to see you all back here. Melanie and I know Ernie. So I see some others back here. I better not mention too many names, but I know some of you are starting to get back in here, so we appreciate that. Uh, again, we welcome our... We actually have a webcast audience, and most of you know that we've had that for some time now, as well as we've had CDs for a long time. But uh, again, we welcome those that are uh, a part of that also. Again... Trying to keep our social distance at this time. Again, you see the tape on the seats and still keeping a six foot apart if you would. Uh, mask, if you want to wear them, I want you to see this one, glory to God. Ronnie, give me this one. <laughs> you, can't, you can't beat that one, so I appreciate that one. But uh, today is, by the way, Flag Day. We're going to be acknowledging that. As a matter of fact, our sermon is going to go, go along with that as we share today. Uh, right now, again, as far as in the house, church service is only 1045. We'll be discussing that in our next board meeting. We'll start deciding when we're going to start having any other services and things. Still having our webcast. Hope we can continue to do that. What we have on Sunday morning will air on Sunday night if you'd like to go back and watch this. Or you know somebody that couldn't attend. I try to text messages and get it across to people. But this morning service will be at 7 o'clock tonight on the web. YouTube or whatever it would be on there for you. Also, Wednesday night we're still doing a Bible study at 7 p.m. You're more than welcome to, to get that. I try to text people, but I know if you get tired of them texts, please let me know. I don't mean to be annoying, but uh, again, I've still got them going. 
And uh, also we want to, again, pray for our internet. We're working on getting a new provider here, and hopefully in the very near future we can start having more for the youth. I know right now it's hard to get anything as far as, uh, what is it, Facebook and Zoom. Hopefully they can have some youth outreaches and stuff with that here in the near future. Maybe in the future we can actually have live services on Sunday morning too. We'll just have to see how things work. Uh, again, the sing-along yesterday went wonderful, had a good turnout. Steve, what's going on the next week or two you was telling us? Uh, the city, the, the mayor has decided that uh, they can't afford to have any bands come in and pay them. So they got a bunch of silly people up there playing for free on Saturday mornings. <laughs> so they're going to make that a, a kind of the centerpiece and they're going to put in a in two weeks, on the 27th, they're going to put up a, a pop-up festival thing where first come, first serve people, vendors can come and sell crafts and arts and crafts, and at least one food truck, maybe two later. And so uh, you'll be able to come up Saturday morning, listen to us sing, maybe buy some arts and crafts, and uh, get you some lunch. So uh, we're uh, and the the bad thing about it is when you're working with the city, you have to deal with a person in charge. And so they, they placed the person in charge I'm probably going to have to argue with over everything. And uh, her name is Julie Hester. <laughs> She'll probably keep him in line. What do you think? <laughs> She'll keep him straight. So, so my wife is the one I have to deal with. So, but uh, but we, are, we are blessed. The city has embraced it and is endorsing it. And, uh, and I, actually, they're taking advantage of what we're doing, so, and I, I appreciate it because more people will come up for crafts and lunch, more people will hear the gospel. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand for that gospel. And again, I, I just I'm blessed every time I walk in the door on Sunday morning and start seeing people come back in here and stuff. I know again we've been down for a while, but at the same time, God's been good. God's blessed us with uh, again. These young ladies helping us with the webcast. Holbert's still doing the CDs as he has for many years. We just appreciate so many means. And again, hopefully, instead of seeing things go terrible, I'm hoping we're going to see a great move of God, a revival in this last day, and I want you to be praying for that. You that are watching by web, again, we'll be taking our offering at the end here today, and we're doing that by with the buckets instead of passing out the plates and stuff. We'll have a prayer, an offertorial prayer at the end when we leave here, and that'll be after our altar call too. And again, if you all like to give that are watching by the web or anything else, you're more than welcome to send your donation. Make sure you support your church first and far most of all to begin with. But you can send those donations to North Charlestown Church of God, 2101 Edgewood Drive, Charlestown, Indiana, 47111. So again, and if you have prayer requests, We'll be taking those here. But if you want to send them to us, email. You can send them to PastorNalen64 at gmail.com. Serena will have that on the web for us too. Or call us at 812-246-4023. And if you got testimonies to share with us. So some of the things that we're trying to let our audience that's watching by webcast know at the same time here today. Mike Perry, he's not with us here today, is he? No, we're still praying for him. He is out of the hospital. Uh, Brenda Ross, you had a uh, nephew, and I, I forgive me, I couldn't hear his name. I even went back and tried to listen to it the other day. How did he do, if I understood correctly? He had surgery on uh, Tuesday for 16 hours, and they changed that. Just can't open his eye right now. Okay. We certainly want to keep but him in Keep him in prayer. Also, Eric Lawhorn let me know last evening that his dad had had a fall and broke his neck. Ernie's thinking there may have been something else to that, but that's as far as I've heard. But we certainly Paul, I believe, is his name. We want to keep him in prayer also. And again, there's a host of other people we'll be mentioning here. Uh, Mike Roberts, he had mentioned a, a friend that was having some heart surgery of the day. I think his name George Brown. We'll continue to lift him up in prayer. And also I had a grandmother yesterday, uh, Edith McClellan. Uh, 
actually got the call to let us know that she wasn't doing well. Got to leave the church here. We'd actually just got through having prayer, and I got up there and got to go to the window and have prayer with them. And uh, about ten minutes later, she went to, to go be with the Lord. So, <laughs> but uh, anyway, <clears throat> that's Edith McClellan, and uh, we'll be having her service sometime this week. But please keep our family in prayer for that. And uh, Again, anybody else that's had loved ones pass away. Claire, I think you had uh, a memorial service for, was it your sister yesterday? I believe? Sister-in-law. Sister-in-law. So, uh, again, anybody that's had loved ones to pass away here recently, we certainly want to keep each and every one of you in prayer. Also, Brenda Jones, I don't see her here today, but her husband, Ronnie, which has been in Sellersburg Healthcare Rehab for probably maybe... I don't know how many months. It's been well over a year, possibly close to two years. He got to go home, I believe, Friday. And we certainly want to pray for that family also. Yeah. Right now, I'd like to ask, have we had any birthdays this past week? Anybody got any older? Earl Hodge? Okay. Somebody mentioned you last week, but you didn't have that until after last week, did you? What day was your birthday? Monday. Oh, okay. I know people was asking me, so I got the same stand up. Anybody else? Well, let's thank the Earl right now. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday. about anniversaries? Anybody had any anniversaries? My mom and stepdad. How many years? 53. 53. Give them a hand. That this past week they celebrated their 43rd anniversary too. So we want to congratulate them also. Anybody else? Anybody been in and out of the hospital that you know of that I haven't mentioned thus far that you want to mention? Okay. Well, we certainly want to just keep everybody in prayer with that. That has had things going on. And right now, I'm going to turn it over to Bob. We're going to be doing the Pledge of Allegiance later on. And actually, it's going to be a part of our message today. So I'm going to save that. I know we've been doing that before we turn over the worship. But right now, we want to welcome Bob back. He's been out. Him and Patty both good to see him back here today. Bob is going to lead us in music now. I'm certainly glad to be back. I want to thank everybody for the prayers while I was off in the hospital. Uh, to, to think that somebody would take time out of their day to say a little prayer for you means a whole lot to me. So I want to thank you. Let's begin our worship by standing and singing hymn number 930. America the Beautiful. <laughs>
in my reign, but let's turn now to hymn number 823, Mansion Over the Hilltop. Everybody have theirs ready? Stephen Cranin, we want to keep him in prayer. That uh, again had to have another amputation, not since the last. Again, I know it's been a couple weeks ago, but again, still praying for him not to have to 
keep dealing with that. Serena Fleener, the young lady doing our camera here today, that has been her uh, niece, but her aunt. <laughs> you can compliment me now, Lisa. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, uh, want to pray for her. She's had some gallbladder issues. Possibly she's going to have to have her move. Want to pray for her, a uh, young lady by the name of Brenda Seward. Uh, again, for Charlotte Perry, and that's uh, again Mike's mother praying for her. And again, for our family that just had uh, my grandmother passed away, we want to remember our family, if you will, please. Vanessa Barrett, continue to pray for her. Also, uh, Donna Pierce, Judy Hall, Ann Wheeler. We want to pray for her. Janice Sanders, Dallas, it's good to see you in here. How's things going for you, young lady? Okay, we still want to keep her in prayer. And uh, again, Mary Shepherd still having a lot of breathing issues. Please be in prayer for her. I know every time I talk to her on the phone, I try not to much, but I had to yesterday. Her and my grandmother were best friends, but uh, she does such a hard time breathing just to talk to you. Heaven Williams, uh, again, Clint Kincaid, Don Jones, and a Mike Abbott with some back issues. And uh, again, we'll be. Well, also George Brown that had a surgery, <coughs> and then that recovered it. Taking prayer requests from you all. Family. Family. Over here, prayer requests. Family. For my old brother Frank, he's back in the hospital and not in good shape. And for my uh, sister Linda, they had a uh, biopsy done and for cancer to come back negative. And I want to thank God for that. Amen. Give the Lord a hand for that. <laughs> had a granddaughter in her last week too. We did. She's doing well. She's home. The family's well. They went through about something else. They're telling us it wasn't the COVID, but yeah, they're well. That's all we care about. God delivered. Amen. Amen. Other prayer requests up here in that? Prayer requests on this side, Ernie? My mom and Mary Wellens and Rudy A. She needs love prayer too. Oh, <coughs> Ronnie? Two lines spoken. And Ronnie, I do thank you. He give us these uh, yeah. masks, and he also give us a new flag. He's been supplying our new flags every year. We appreciate that, brother. Thank you, Melody. Uh, Craig needs. Oh, okay. Okay, think she may have a brain tumor, so mm -hmm. young woman, two small children, so. Oh, yeah. wow. absolutely. Just pray for her. She's not local, so there's nothing I can do to help her. Same we thing. We love that feeling that way. Yes, we do. Same way we've had to do with a lot of people right now. Yes. Pray. You can't really visit anybody hardly. Well, hopefully things are getting better. The Lord will bless her, I'm sure. Yes. Absolutely. Claire, do you have your hand up? Yes, for the Pollard family. Absolutely. Irony? Pray for Charlotte. She's got a bad case of poison ivy. Ooh. Oh. Oh, okay. Ooh. Absolutely. Other prayer requests on this side, Brenda? I'd like to ask first for our country here. Right now, with everything that's going on, there's a lot of lost souls out there. Absolutely. Eddie? Pray for myself and my family and for a young lady we know, Felicity Salem. She's had a lot of problems and I'd like to be prayer for her. Okay. Donna? I remember my daughter and all her mother passed away this Friday. Oh. So I remember her family. Oh, and she'd had a tumor also or something. She had a brain some kind of kids. Yes. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Other prayer requests on down through here on this side? Over here on this side, prayer request. Anybody? Glenn? Somebody I work with wanted me to remember his mother and her. Okay. I believe it's Ann? Yes. They call you mother, I'll call you Ann. Thank you. <laughs> My brother has COPD. Okay. And his kidneys have failed. He's also on dialysis. Oh. Okay. And prayer for him and his family. Absolutely. Anybody else? Come back here, Brian. You need to keep Steve Pastor and all the gang that sing down there on the square. Here's why. There's something going on. I've been seeing this for about a year or so. With all that's happened, none of the pro athletes are playing ball. Nobody's doing hardly anything. The only thing they can get is people come down there and sing gospel music. And it's funny because all these worldly groups won't come in unless you pay them. We don't have to be paid. And the great thing is, it's a great chance for a revival to start because there are going to lose some people out there. But hopefully this is a great gospel singer and minister said something years ago on a game video and it's stuck with me for many years and Steve's done something that's really hard to do. Sometimes God's just saying, give me a little bit of your time and let me show you something. I know there's been a lot of times when Steve's prayed and hoped that a lot of people would come and 
There's more and more people coming to see you doing the right thing for the right reasons. Amen. Amen. Just a good example of God saying, hey, give me a little bit of your time. I'm going to show you some stuff. Watch this. Because now the gospel is going to come through no matter what. Amen. And even more so, pray for the safety of the uh, performers down there, all the people visiting, because we do live in a crazy world. Yes, absolutely. Anybody else prayer requests? Dallas? Yes, for my family. Absolutely. Serena? Um, I want to pray for the youth. A lot of my students are dealing with depression and stuff right now, um, having to seek therapy help. And also, my friend goes to church in downtown Louisville, and they were shot at this week. Um, she, said there's, she said there's also been break-ins. So I just want to pray for her safety because all she's trying to do is get to know the Lord. So. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? How many will uplifted hands for yourself or someone else? God sees those hands. As you stand this morning, uh, again, if you're with family and want to hold hands with them, that's fine. If not, uh, again, I can't say nothing. <laughs> so, uh, again, try to keep our social distance. But uh, anyway, let's agree, agree in prayer here today, if you will. come to you this day, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to gather in this house today, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord, that God, you are that very present help in time of trouble. Lord, we know that, as one lady was talking there a minute ago, Brenda, about our country, Lord, how we need a great move in this land today, Lord, with so many things going on in this land today. And again, we want to continue to stand on Second Chronicles 714 and again we want to be your people called by your name and we do want to pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways we we pray for a great move of the holy spirit upon this land i'm talking about steve with the singing on the square and other opportunities that are being given i thank you lord for again our church buildings being able to be open once again lord and look forward to the time when we can have other meetings and other gatherings and see our again greater moves with our youth and different things also coming forth i, I pray god for the ones that have had surgeries this week that are healing lord for people that are again that had other situations lord weeks and maybe even months ago that are still recovering we pray for each and every one of them lord and we ask you god that you be with them and uh, minister to their needs lord pray for Ronnie Jones had just got back after being out of his home for well over a year, Lord. I pray for that transition to continue to go well, Lord. I, I pray for my mother with, uh, again, her heart that everything's going back into rhythm or will soon and shortly, Lord. I pray for our family, Lord, with uh, the McClellans that just had my grandmother pass away. We pray for encouragement and strength during that time. Others that have had loved ones to pass away and, and have had services already and different things that are taking place. We pray for each and every one of them, Father God. We pray for those that are dealing with tumors, Lord. For those that are dealing, as we said a while ago, with back problems, Lord. Uh, praying for people that are dealing with arthritis, Lord. I know my own wife's having a struggle with that even this morning. And I know, again, there's others here, Doris, I know she has that, and other people in this congregation. Be with each and every one of them, Lord. Uh, be with those that are shut-ins in their homes right now, shut-ins in the nursing homes and rehabs, and many haven't had visitors, Lord. We pray for them, Lord. We uh, lift up Bobby Doss as he'd asked for prayer and, and wanted to let everybody know how much he missed being here at church and loved everybody. We pray for him and his family and, and for others, Lord, that... Uh, Again, I know it's difficult, Lord, when we can't get out and be with others at the same time. We do pray for Eric Lawhorn, for his dad Paul today, that you'll touch and minister to him, Father God. And, and again, for all the others, Lord, that their names have been mentioned by others or ourselves. People that are being prayed for right now that we don't even know, Lord. We're in agreement according to your will, whatever those needs are, Lord. We do pray for, again, this nation. We pray for its leaders. Pray for our military, our police departments, our fire departments, our medical departments, our EMSs, our farmers. For all those that protect and serve, that you'll protect them, Lord God. We pray your touch upon each and every one, Father God. We, we pray, Lord, uh, again, for a move of the Holy Spirit, for a great revival, Lord, that, God, great things will come forth. We thank you for this opportunity to be gathered in this house today. 
And we pray for, again, the needs of all Your children and most of all for a closer walk with You. We do pray for this virus to be gone back to the pits of hell where it belongs. And again, for those that have dealt with it, I pray for healing. For those that have had losses, I pray for, again, comfort. And again, Lord, most of all, we pray for the lost to be saved. Praying for them all. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. And again, we'll be doing the offering at the end. Still getting used to doing things a little differently around here. Hopefully, by the time I get used to it, we'll have to change back to normality, I hope soon. Right now, Bob Goforth is going to come and do the special for us. And again, it's good to see him and Patty back once again. And all the rest of you, give him a hand this morning. This is uh, going to be a little bit hard on me today, sitting here listening to your sermon. I'm usually eating a bowl of ice cream while I'm listening. So it's it's uh, going to be a little bit of a problem, but I'll make it. proclamation with us once again today. Say this for me today. This is my Bible. This is, my Bible. This is the Word of God. This is the Word of God. It, is it is a lamp to my feet. It's a light to my path. It's, path. it's words. It's words. Well, I hide in my heart that I might not sin against God. All Scripture is inspired of God. Blessed are the doers and not the hearers only. In Jesus' name, Amen. You may be seated if you please. I'd like to entitle this message today, Bring Back the Cross. I want to ask you this morning, if you would, I've got two places in Scripture, and then I'm going to be doing some reading, some patriotic things I'd like to share today. 
And the title does come from a song that was written back in the early 90s. And, and it has to do with the flag crying out for the cross. And doesn't this country need the cross back with the flag once again? Bring back the cross is a perfect entitlement, I think, for today's message. But uh, over in 1 Timothy chapter 2, I want to read the first verses here. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 8, and then we'll be going to Matthew chapter 5 after I do some reading that we'll be looking at. Paul speaking to Timothy here, basically to share with the church. He says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. I don't believe that was a suggestion. I believe that's something we need to do. Uh, we can argue about politics all, all day long, and a lot of us probably do, whether you're on this thought or that thought, or whether you're this uh, Republican, Democrat, Independent. But i got to tell you, the Bible tells us we're to pray for those in authority. Whether you like them or not, whether you agree with them or not, we're to pray for them. But it says pray for everybody, praise God, but especially those that are in leadership and in authority. Why? Not because we want to see them be on our team or this, that, and the other. Not that we probably don't have those feelings. But that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all what? Godliness and honesty. Folks, we need a breakthrough in our country today. We need a move of the Holy Spirit, glory to God. You know, during these, uh, again, peaceful protests that broke out into other things, I tell you, one of the most disgracing things I saw is people out there taking flags and burning them. I mean, all of it was terrible, but I thought, again, if you don't like this country, I, I got a suggestion. <laughs> You know, they do have airplanes and, you know, but again, that's, I'm not trying to make anybody mad, but, but glory to God, we need to respect this, what people have fought for and what people have shed blood for. And again, whether we agree with each other or don't agree with each other, we've got to lift each other up in prayer. And I'm talking about for us as the children of God, we need to, again, you can't expect the world to change. But Christians, we've got to be the men and women that God's called us to be. And especially when it comes to prayer, do you believe your prayers matter? Yeah, do you believe that your prayers have power? The Bible says the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Yeah. If we believe that, we need to use that, don't we? If we trust that, we need to be practicing that glory to God. And, and when it goes on here, it says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. It's not God's will that anybody should be lost. Amen. Whether you like them or dislike them, I believe they'd be a lot better be saved, don't you? Whether you're on the same team or not the same team, whether it's politics or religions or whatever, our different situations, different colors, different races, if we could just get each other saved, Lord God, don't you think that that would make a difference? Don't you think that salvation ought to make a difference? It ought to make a changed man or woman in us, praise God. Somebody that's going to love you, whether you're black or white, yellow or red, whether you go to somewhere else or somewhere you're at, whatever you're doing. I'm not going to tell you that we don't have disagreements, but glory to God, we've got to love one another. How can you say, the Bible tells us, how can you say you love God when you don't love other people, glory to God? Going on here it says, it says, who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. What is truth? Pontius Pilate said that to Jesus one time. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by Him, Lord God. He is truth. God's Word is truth. Jesus is the Word made flesh and dwelt among us. Do you believe the Bible is all true? Amen. Because if you don't believe it's all true, you don't believe it at all. It's either all true or it's all wrong. And I've got to tell you, as I've said before, I've tried to rest, and Jesus is the best. <laughs> it's just as simple as I can make it. And verse 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator 
between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave Himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity which is truth. I will therefore that man pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and without doubting. Can you lift up a hand to the Lord today? I know one man said, you know, when you raise your hands like that, it means I surrender. Who do you surrender to? Jesus Christ, hallelujah. That's who I'm surrendering to. Remember that also, I surrender all. All, do we really surrender it all to Him, Lord of God? Our, our, again, our different disagreements and all arguments and everything else to do here today that I want to share with you. When I looked at the word nations, you know, this is one nation under God, isn't it? When you look up the word nation, there's just hundreds and hundreds of words that pop up in Scripture. And I'm just going to read a few of them here today probably. And I'm not going to mention the, the chapter and verses it would take all morning. But some of the verses, most of them is in Psalms, and then by the time we get to the end we'll be in the book of Revelation. But here's just a few. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but man. For the kingdom of the Lord... And He is the governor among the nations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom He hath chosen for His own inheritance. He ruleth by His power forever. His eyes behold the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for Thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Yea, all kings shall fall down before Him. All nations shall serve Him. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for Thou shalt inherit all nations. O praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise Him, all ye people. Righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And this gospel of the kingdom, now we're in the New Testament, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And before Him shall be gathered all nations, and He shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth the sheep from his goats. And here's the great commission. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I'll just finish here. I've got probably a dozen more, but when you get down to the book of Revelations, His head says, Who shall not fear Thee, O Lord, and glorify Thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. In the midst of the street, the last chapter in the book of Revelations, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree was for the healing of the nations. We need a healing in our nation today, don't we, praise God? We need a touch from the Master's hands. Today we acknowledge Flag Day. June 14, 1777. Today, we're talking about right now, today is Flag Day. On May 30th, 1916, President Woodrow Wilson issued a presidential proclamation establishing a national flag day on June 14th. Many Americans celebrate flag day, flag day by displaying the red, white, and blue in front of homes and businesses and churches. The day commemorates the adoption of the stars and stripes as the official flag of the United States. Do you know the flag's history? According to American's legend, in June of 1776, George Washington commissioned Betsy Ross, a Philadelphia streamstress, to create a flag for the new nation in anticipation of a declaration of the independence. Also on June 14, 1777, John Adams spoke about the flag at a meeting of the Continental Congress in Philadelphia. 
He said, Resolve that the flag of the 13 United States shall be 13 stripes, alternate red and white, that the Union be 13 stars, white on a blue field, representing a new constellation. There have been 27 official versions of the flag so far. Stars have been added to it as states have entered the Union. The current version dates of July 4, 1960, when Hawaii became the 50th state. Do your children say the Pledge of Allegiance at their school, perhaps with their hands over their heart, or sing the Star Spangled Banner, the national anthem before a baseball game? Many Americans sang, pledge, and pay respect to the flag, O oh, glory, as a symbol of the country's democracy and independence. Saluting the flag is a way to celebrate and honor the United States of America. One more reading here. A few years ago, Chris Grayson, the owner of Grayson's Funeral Home here in Charlestown in New Washington, Indiana, had shared a message with us on a Sunday morning, as he has a couple times. With this one in particular, he shared about Red Skeleton, sharing about the flag, and I'm not going to play that for copyright reasons, just to make sure I don't do something wrong. But I've, I'd like to recite some of that today if you're willing to listen. Red Skeleton talked about how when he was a little boy, how that one of his teachers had shared about just what they were really reciting when they recited the Pledge of Allegiance. And did they really understand the words which were they how they started out? I, meaning me, an individual, a committee of one. Pledge, meaning to dedicate all of my worldly good to give without self-pity. Allegiance, my love and devotion to the flag, our standard, O oh glory. A symbol of courage. And wherever she weighs, there is respect because your loyalty has given her a dignity that shouts freedom is everybody's job. Of the united, that means we have all come together. States, individual committees that have united into 48 great states, 48 individual committees with pride and dignity and purpose, all divided for imaginary boundaries, yet united to a common cause. And that's love of country, of America, and to the republic. A republic, a sovereign state in which power is invested into the representative chosen by the people to govern. And the government is the people, and it's from the people to the leaders, not from the leaders to the people for which it stands. One nation, meaning so blessed by God, under God, without explanation we need there, indivisible, incapable of being divided, with liberty, which is freedom, the right of power for one to live his own life without fears, threats, or any sort of retaliation. And justice, the principle and qualities of dealing fairly with others for all. That means boys and girls, men and women, it's as much your country as it is mine. Now let us stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance ourselves, if you will. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. You may be seated. Don't that do something to your heart? I mean, when you know your dedication to your country, and again, our dedication is to our Lord and Savior first and far most of all, but this country was founded upon the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't care what historians try to rewrite. They try to do the same thing to the Bible. But again, I'm going to tell you, truth is truth. And this country was founded upon the gospel of Jesus Christ. Also, another thing that he wrote on here, he goes on that after the pledge is said, Red Skillington said, since he was a small boy, two states had been added to the country. And two words had been added to the Pledge of Allegiance under God. Would it be a pity if someone said this is a prayer and that would be eliminated? 
from the schools too. Wow, look at what we have today. Yes, this is Flag Day, and we do need to remember that, but most of all, we need to remember as Christians, in God we trust. Hallelujah. Amen. Can somebody say a big amen to that? Amen. I know that's a lot of reading and a lot of sharing today, but I believe our country needs a move of God, don't you? I believe our country needs to turn back to from whence it cometh, praise God. Also, Red Skillington had made this comment that he compared the Pledge of Allegiance, not necessarily biblically, but to the same allegiance that we have with the Sermon on the Mount. And I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 5 today, not because Red Skillington, but because of the Bible. Let's look to what God's Word says this morning in Matthew chapter 5. Amen, please. Amen. And we're going to be reading through the first 16 verses here today before we close out here today and commenting and ministering on that. And it says, And seeing the multitudes, verse 1, He went up into a mountain, and when He was set, His disciples came unto Him, and He opened His mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed. And that can be complete or fulfilled. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You know, the Bible says a broken and contrite spirit the Lord will not refuse. What does it mean to be poor in spirit? I thought we wanted to be filled with the Spirit. Yeah, but we want to be filled with God's Spirit, not our Spirit. we got enough human spirit going on around all the time, but we need the Holy Spirit working in us. And you know that two spirits can't dwell in the same house, if I remember reading right. One's got to go and one's got to come in. And we need that humanistic spirit. Matter of fact, the Bible calls it an antichrist spirit. We need that Spirit to be gone in Jesus' name and be filled with His Spirit, praise God. So again, we're not talking about being poor in the Holy Spirit. We're talking about blessed are the poor in spirit, that human spirit that tries to get us to think about me, myself, and I. <coughs> Everything's about what I can get, what I can grab. But i got to tell you, God's got the Holy Spirit. God's got the Spirit that, again, will give us what we need, but we first got to be broken and realize that and contrite and realize that I need not my Spirit to keep being more and more, but His. It says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. We ministered on uh, John chapter 11 last week when we were talking about Lazarus. You remember the short one of the shortest verse, verses in the Bible it says, Jesus wept. And again, what was he weeping about? It said he groaned and grieved and other things. But also there was another place where it talked about Jesus when he wept over Jerusalem. He talked about how a hen would check it, you know, bring in his chicks, but they wouldn't listen. They wouldn't come to him. Are we mourning for people like that today? Are we concerned about people's soul salvation? Have we got a heart for the lost? And again, I'm not trying to break a record over the same thing over and over again, but we've got to have a heart for a lost and dying world. Right now, we've got an opportunity. I mean, things are going to heck in a handbasket in this world today, aren't they? And I'm saying it as nicely as I can. We see what's going on today. The COVID-19 and then all the, the protests, and again, not doubting that, but with all the things that sometimes shouldn't go along with it, like the rioting and the looting and then the racism, and then you see people writing all kinds of filth and garbage. I walked by a vehicle the other day and seen all kinds of nasty stuff written on it about... You know what's going on right now, and I don't think that's what our children need to be looking at going down the street. But good, googly goo was one man would say. Don't we need Christ in our country again? Don't we need a great move of the Holy Ghost in our lives today? It says, Blessed are the meek. That's talking about humbling. Isn't that a part of our lives as Christians? And again, meek doesn't mean weak. The Bible says Moses during his time, he was one of the meekest of all men of that time. And he wasn't no weakling by any way, shape, or form. But he did have humility. He did have humbleness. Matter of fact, if you remember Moses at one time, he, he, you know, he, he prayed for God to kill him if he wasn't going to get people right. You know, if he was going to destroy everybody else, just take me. He said almost identical to what Paul said in the New Testament. I could wood myself to be a curse that my kinsfolks could be saved. That takes a big heart to, to almost go to the point where you wouldn't care if you went to hell and everybody else would go to heaven. That takes a big heart. But they knew they couldn't do that. 
But blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I mean, we have a hunger and thirst for the things in this world. I mean, even the food that we put in our bodies, we have a hunger for uh, materialism and all the things that this world has to offer. But do we have a hunger and thirst for the things of God? Do we have a hunger and thirst for what God's got for us? Over in Isaiah, I think it's around the 50, 55th chapter, it talks, come and buy food and drink without money. He wasn't talking about buying literal physical food and drink. He was talking about righteousness and holiness with God. Hallelujah. Amos, I think, well, I better not quote the chapter, but Amos said the people were dying and famished. And he says they were, again, doing that not because of food and water, but because of the Word of God. People had no desire for it. People had no understanding of it. Another place, it says, My people die for a lack of knowledge. He's not talking about worldism knowledge. He's talking about knowledge of God, knowledge of the truth of who God is and what God's wanting to do for us. Do we have a hunger and thirst after righteousness? Not a hunger and thirst just to go to church service. I'm glad we do that. But I'm talking about a hunger and thirst for what God's wanting to do in our lives. Not just on Sundays, but every day of the week, every moment of our lives, do we have a hunger and thirst? Do you want to see Jesus one of these days? Amen. Do you have a desire that when this life is over, praise God, we're going to see Him face to face? Remember the old song, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world has to offer. Oh, praise God. I don't know about you, but that's the, the greatest thing that we could ever have in our lives. But it says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Do you have mercy towards other people? I'll give you another word that goes along with mercy. How about forgiveness? If you're going to have mercy, you've got to have forgiveness. You remember there was a guy one time that, that again, he had a leader that was over top of him, and he owed him a great amount of money. And he couldn't pay it, and he was going to be thrown into debtor's prison with everything and everybody he had with his family. And he went and talked to the master of the household, and he said, Have mercy on me. And remember, the man forgave him of everything that he owed, and it was a great amount. And then he went out and found a guy that didn't hardly owe him five bucks. Grabbed him by the neck, was about ready to choke him. I'm just illustrating a little bit, but just was all getting on his face and said, Pay me what I owe you. And he said, I can't. Have mercy on me. And he threw him into debtor's prison. And then the man that had forgiven him heard about it. And you remember what he did? He brought him to him. And he said, You remember what I did for you? You turned around and didn't do it for others. And if you're not going to do it for others, I'm not going to do it for you. And he was making comparison to God. I mean, if we're not going to forgive others, how can we expect God to forgive us? If we're not going to have mercy on others, how can we expect God to have mercy on us? I'm not telling you you've got to be so happy with people that have done you wrong that you just want to see them around you all the time, but you still got to love one another. you still got to forgive other people. Not for their sake as much as your sake sometimes. Going on here, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. How can I have a pure heart? I mean, I'm only flesh and blood, the song says, isn't it? I'll tell you how you have a flesh, how you have a pure heart. When the Spirit of God comes upon you and God brings forth conviction to your life, and you repent and turn of your sins and ask Christ to come into your life. All of a sudden, a transformation takes place. We call it being born again. And all of a sudden, you find out, what can wipe away all my sins? Nothing, Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me white as snow? Nothing but the blood of Jesus, glory to God. When that blood has been applied, all of a sudden, that debt has been paid. It says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Are we trying to make peace with other people as best we can? I know some people are not going to 
They're not going to be peaceful at all. But do we try? I mean, trying is the biggest thing. I can't just say, well, nobody wants peace. I'm going to tell you, everybody wants inner peace. They want the turmoil to start over. They want the craziness to stop somewhere along the line. But you've only got one a person that can give you that. Character, whatever we might call And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, in, in this world, you're going to have tribulations. You're going to have suffering. You're going to have things that go on. But there is a peace. I'm talking about a peace that passes all understanding. Do you believe that today? Oh, Jesus said, My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth I unto you. This peace I give, it, it passes all understanding. We need His peace, but we need to share that with others. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. When was the last time somebody got on you about being a Christian? You better be thanking God for the red, white, and blue, hadn't you? If we were to live in another country, can you imagine the persecution you'd be going through for being in a building right now? There's people that can't come to a worship service. I mean, they kept us out for a couple of months, didn't they? Aren't you glad to be back in a, what we call a house of God now? Aren't you glad that we have that liberty? I tell you what, I don't want to lose that again, do you? I mean, two months was bad enough, but can you imagine having to go underground all the days of your life just to be able to pray together with other people, just to, to be able to fellowship and hear the Word of God preached and to be able to teach and minister? There's other lands that have that all the time. And we need to make sure that we pray and believe that that's not going to be a part of our country. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteous sakes, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Reading on here. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt hath lost its savor, Wherewith shall it be salted? It is hence there good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of man. Remember Jesus talked about being the light, being the salt. Jesus has went back to heaven, hasn't He? Amen. But He's left us as the body of Christ, His body, to be not only the salt, but in the next verse it says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do man light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Verse 16, we'll stop out here in Scripture today. It says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Who do you think you was glorifying when you was living for the devil? You say, I've never lived for the devil. There's only two people you can serve. God or the devil. You say, well, I serve myself. I still don't buy that. Satan is the God of this world right now, isn't it? And if you're not serving the God of eternity, then you're serving the God of this world. You may not even realize that people don't. You know, Matthew 6.24 says, No man can serve two masters. He either loved the one and hate the other, he'll serve one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. How about you today? Who are you going to serve? Who's a part of your life? There was a, a song that was, again, I mentioned earlier by Squire Parson, I believe, back in the early 90s. Bring back the cross. And you gentlemen, if you want to come back up here, we'll be finish it here in just a moment. And that song went something like this. It says, As I watched old glory waving in the courthouse square, she seemed so all alone and fragile even in despair. The stars have lost their glimmers, the stripes their majesty. As I thought, what is the matter? It seems though God glory spoke to me. Bring back the cross. By myself, I cannot stand. Bring back the cross. We need the help of God's strong hand. Can't you hear old glory cry? Can't you feel the grief and pain? America, bring back the cross. 
again. Glory, oh glory. For certain we have had our faults. That's not what I'm speaking of, but the cross and the flag together, they show quite a pair. Though the cross was invisible, all so know that it is there. Bring back the cross by myself. I cannot stand. Bring back the cross. We need the help of God's strong hand. Can't you hear, O oh glory? Can't you feel the grief and pain? America, bring back the cross again. And I will cling to the old rugged cross. And I will exchange it someday for a crown. Do you believe the old rugged cross is the answer to today? Do you believe that on an old hill called Mount Calvary, that's where it began? I want to ask you today, do you know where you stand at with Christ? Whether you're in this building today or whether you're listening, whether internet or CD, whatever, do you know where you stand at with Christ today? Do you know that you know that you know? Yes, He's only a prayer away. But it's got to be from the heart, not from the preacher's heart. It's got to be from your spirit and not mine. I can't save you no more than anybody else can. We can lead you in a prayer of salvation, but you've got to believe that in your heart. You've got to accept that in your life. Would you pray with us today? And just simply say this with us today, if you would, if you're out there listening or here today and you don't know where you stand at with Christ, would you just say, Lord God, I ask You today to forgive me of my sins, to come into my heart, to make me a child of God. I confess with my mouth Jesus Christ is my Lord. And I believe in my heart that God has raised Him from the dead. And because I confess and because I believe, I'm saved. And I'm ready for heaven. If you prayed that prayer today, whether you prayed it in eloquency, speech, or anything else, if you prayed it from your heart, go and tell somebody that I give my life to Christ. Don't be ashamed. The Bible says if you'll be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. But if you'll confess me before man, I'll confess you before my Father in heaven. As you all stand with us in the building today, if you have a prayer need today, again, you're more than welcome to come to these altars. I, I ask you to keep your distance if you do a bunch, but if not, again, you're more than welcome to come to this altar. And if you need somebody to pray with you, if you like, I'll put a mask on, whatever, we can pray together. But if you have a need today, you can make your way to the altars. They have a closing song here today.
will be listening by web or those that will be listening by CD. We pray your blessings upon each and every one and for all the needs, Lord. We agree in prayer for what people are going through, Lord. And God, you'll meet that urgent need. You'll bring forth peace. You'll bring forth, uh, again, a, a change of, of heart, a change of life. I ask you today, Lord, as we go into our homes or wherever we'll be going at from this building, that we go in peace and comfort with the Holy Spirit. I pray up over our offering today, a tithe and offering, love gift, whatever is being given. I pray your blessings upon that. I pray that you'll bless those that give. And for those that have not to give, I pray blessings upon them also. And again, we thank you for this time together and for the time that we'll be together as you tarry in this world. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Come back and be with us next Sunday or watch the webcast tonight at 7 or Wednesday at 7 also. God bless. Have a great day.